Hi guys, it's Mac Geek Alex. Today we're going to take a look at how I'm going to fit the Zygmatek Dark Knight 2 Nighthawk Edition air cooler with ceramic coating on the ASUS Z77E ITX. The Zygmatek Dark Knight 2 Nighthawk Edition cooler is a really efficient cooler and you can look for the reviews down below. They rival even some of the closed water loop cooling systems out there. So if you're looking for uh, closed water loop cooling system, I recommend that you definitely check this out. The reason why I chose this cooler was because it was the only, it was one of the few that would actually fit on my Z77E ITX. It being an ITX motherboard, there's not really a lot of space on it. The GPU card is right up against the CPU block, so it doesn't really allow for some of the bigger coolers out there like the Noctua NHD14s or the Fantex. So this uh, cooler was a perfect fit for my motherboard. Let's go take a look at how we're going to fit this cooler on the motherboard. When you open a packet, there will be a box of accessories. Um, take the accessories out and put aside the AMD mounters because we'll be using the Intel mounters instead. So organize your accessories. You should have one backplate, two Intel clips, a crossbar, four screws, two nuts, four washers, and four T-nuts. To start off, it's probably a good idea to take a look at how your backplate fits onto the back of the motherboard. So go ahead and take the backplate and uh, make sure you can line up the holes um, on the backplate with the holes on the motherboard. For my case, I needed to do a little bit of a modification on the backplate because the top left corner of the backplate, as you can see here, interferes with an integrated circuit chip on the back of the motherboard. So I needed to um, take a pair of pliers and just snip away a little bit at the top of the black plate. So not a whole lot of modification, but it was necessary to make that modification here. With the back plate firmly in place, go ahead and take one of the screws and put the washer into uh, one of the screw heads and screw it firmly into the motherboard and repeat it for the other three screws as well. Next up, we will have to put the CPU in before we put the heatsink on top because this heatsink will be screwed on top of the CPU. So go ahead and take the protective plastic cover off of the CPU block and unlatch the um, spring-loaded latch. Um, put the chip in, uh, making sure that the notches on the side of the CPU line up with the notches that you see on the CPU block. So just drop it in and then put the cover back on and relatch it. The next thing I needed to do was to decide on the orientation of the CPU cooler because I don't want it to block the PCI Express port because that's where I'm going to put a GPU. So I took the um, heatsink, put it on top of the CPU to determine which direction I want it in because that will determine which direction I'm going to put the crossbars and the Intel clips in. With the Intel clips now in the correct orientation, you can take the T-nuts and screw them into place. Don't screw them down too firmly though because you might need to move them around a bit to accommodate for the length of the crossbar. Let's head on to installing the RAMs now. Ensure that the latches on the RAM slots are unlatched and line the RAMs up so that the notch at the bottom of the RAM coincides with the notches on the RAM slots. In my case, you can see that the shorter end um, goes on the left side. So go ahead and push the RAMs in so that they are firmly secured. Um, put the other one in as well and then relatch the RAMs. We can now do a quick check to make sure that the bottommost fins of the heatsink actually do clear the top of the RAMs. Go ahead and clean the top of the CPU using a lint-free cloth. A good thermal paste will ensure good conductivity contact between the bottom of the heatsink and the CPU. I'm using the Arctic Cooling MX4 here, which is pretty highly regarded. When putting on thermal paste, the best method I found is to just put a pea-sized paste at the center of the CPU because when it heats up, the paste will start flowing around and cover the whole of the CPU. If you put more than that, it might overflow onto the sides, onto the edges, and damage your CPU. Now remove the plastic covering on the bottom of the heatsink pipes and place the heatsink firmly 
on the CPU, making sure that it is in the correct orientation so that it does not block the PCI slot. Place the crossbar over the heatsink pipes so that the holes go into the poles on the Intel clips. Then secure the crossbar in place with the hexagonal nuts. So that was it guys, that's how you put the Zygmatec Dark Knight 2 cooler onto the ASRock Z770 ITX motherboard. I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe and definitely check out the playlist on how you can make your own Hackintosh. Stay tuned and I'll see you next time.